Okay. Uh, played Monty's Gamble S23 using the retro rules by Minden Games. This is a very small rule set. You can see the well, the book format's almost exactly like the small ASL rule book, except for much thinner. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Um, anyway, the rules are very short. I mean, there's a couple reviews and people talking about it on here. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find the... So optional rules start on page 20. It's amazing how comprehensive this is for how small it is, how much it does cover. Um, it's for any sort of tactical game. Really, it was designed, I think, and I didn't read the intro yet, but designed for ASL. Um, <clears throat> so uh, got this is a five-turn, a four-and-a-half-turn game. Germans are trying to go from here to here. Um, British are holding them off with uh, two AT guns, uh, one Piat, and then a bunch of machine guns and stuff. The Germans have three or four machine guns, a couple of varying sizes or qualities of squads, and three Stugs, two of which don't have machine guns that they're disabled. Um, the hesitate, the big, the the big thing is the hesitation rule, and basically what that means is if. Um, an infantry unit wants to move into an open hex within range of uh, line of sight and range of a, another infantry unit or support weapon. It rolls a hesitation roll, and if it loses, it has to stop there. So what that's doing, and that can happen multiple times. It doesn't matter who's, who's checking against it. So like if this German here wants to move here, forget these guys here. If he wanted to move anywhere in the open of these guys, well, these guys, they'd roll a hesitation roll. If they failed, they have to stop there. So they could end out in the middle of the street. So then someone will shoot them later. They pass, they get to keep moving. They do have to stop when they get next to another unit, though. So like if this guy was here, he'd have to stop here. Then there is a defensive fire phase, so someone would get to fire on them. But I'll tell you what, the um, fire chart, it's pretty uh, forgiving. Um, I didn't get, I mean, there, there are my casualties. It was hard. It was a really hard to hit someone in the building, especially like, so imagine if you're rolling a four on up three, well, you're not going to hit unless you, um, if you had a three plus, so a four or three, but you're not going to hit unless you roll snake eyes. Um, let's see what's actually, this is a good example. Where is the normal one? You had a four and you had a three plus. Well, I guess it's a oh no four. You could hit on a four up. You could hit it on a roll of four. Nope, I'm sorry, on a roll of three. So you have three more or two chances to get it. I guess it's not that much. So all right, well never mind. I don't know, but yeah, it was hard to hit. I had two rolls at twelve out in the middle of the street and. I just got that, and what that means is if someone, so if I roll that and it says seven, that seven indicates like these guys would break. Anyone with a morale of seven or less breaks. It's kind of a cool way of handling it. I don't know if, no, he's not there, if, if a leader matters. So if I had a eight minus one, does that help all these guys improve their leader, their morale? I don't think it does. So these guys, if on that thing, they would all break. Um, it's kind of cool because then if it's an asterisk, they do an ELR check, which is really hard to get. They also have a hero creation if you roll a two on rally. And they do also put something in there for battle hardening as an optional rule. So there's a lot, there's para dropping. So I got to tell you, there's a lot of cool things that would make it so I can use more of my ASL kit quicker then diving into all the deep rules, which I've started, um, but it's just a lot to do, and I want to get games in, use my stuff if I can. More. So, what am I trying to say here? Where I where I got kind of squirrely here though, is the um, hesitation for tanks. So the only thing that causes hesitation on tanks are. And actually, I need to look this up. 
other tanks, and I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna. I assumed guns, so let's just. I assumed guns. I, I'm not enough sure it's a rule, and I don't want to make you dizzy. And then I already am. So like when he came within, when he when they moved on the board, this anti tank gun made him do a check. The anti tank gun is a 57 now. They have a chart here that you look at. 57L has a gun factor of 15. So you take that 15 minus the um, armor factor, which that's not going to work. Armor factor of that uh, Stug, which is an 8. So that's a 7. So then I roll two dice, and if I get a, if I get less than a 7, so 6 or less, they hesitated. Well, so that happened here. They did hesitate. Actually, it happened in two or three turns. Maybe two turns. Then three, he got it. Once he passes it, he goes. Uh, you know, and I don't know if it mattered if he was right next to him. So I went. So I didn't know. I didn't want to look up the rules. So I just went up and around. Infantry doesn't stop tanks. So they went up and around, and then they had to check again because he was rotated to face him again. He passed, and then he was off the field. The on the turn one, I had a guy pass to hesitation. It seems a little easy to for them to pass. Now, I did hesitate. I'm kind of rambling here, but I did hesitate here twice. So, I mean, it could have happened the whole game, um, but it didn't, you know. Also, there's no turning penalty. So, I mean, I had a tank back here, and I shouldn't have even have done this because it turned out it was impossible to hit this guy. So I really should have just gone, drove my first... Second tank, I just kind of use them as a support, and there was really no need. Because, again, that tank could not hit anything to save it alive. And this anti-tank gun never did hit a tank. And he was within two and four. So, and there are no, I mean, once you hit a tank, it's destroyed. Um, and there's no turning penalties uh you, there's no there's no turrets but both all three of these were assault guns stug so they couldn't didn't have a turret anyway i think he does have an option for turrets i'd put that in there to use um and i was thinking about adding just do an op fire like op fire but then you do lose something so and that really comes down to more infantry so i was like man it'd be, it'd be nice if you just use op fire like a lot of games use a more simplified just you get a you get one fire well, the problem with that is, well, then you can just do like you do in a lot of those games, and you could just send this guy up. And, you know, you just walk this guy, and he op fires. Well, now everyone else can just all the oxen free all around him. Um, whereas hesitation. So let's say this guy walks here and he hesitates. All right. If this guy moves here and has and he, and he moves here, he still has to take a hesitation check. So this guy could could affect everyone in a unit. So that's kind of cool. And so, I don't know, something's got me about it. And I know people don't do a lot of, at least they're not recording them, so they don't do a lot of recording and plays of this, so I don't know if that's getting them. But there's just, it, it's got such little possibilities that it's like, man, it just opens up a world of quicker play of some, like, amazing ASL kit. Like, I'm thinking Pegasus Bridge. Um, I'm thinking about a Nordwin thing. I got a guy that's got a Norwin thing, and he was just asking me the other day if I wanted it. I'm hesitating because I'm like, I don't know if I'm even going to dive deeper into this. So, um, Also, there was a question about, I mean, so, you know, he says you can house rule stuff. I mean, it's fine, and I don't like to house rule until I've played it, so I need to play it a couple more times, but, man, something's got me there. If anybody has any clues, any ideas, maybe you've played and you've, I don't know. Let me know. All right. We'll see you. Bye.